And then, uh, Nick, uh, we are going to go into the second question with you. Uh, it is much shorter. Uh, so this one goes, uh, a tenant uh, has given notice uh, not to renew their lease, right? Uh, he's not willing, the problem is, he's not willing to give access for the viewing uh, to prospective tenants who will obviously be moving in once they move out. Uh, now, the question is, could the owner claim a month's rental as he's going to suffer uh, the loss of income, uh, obviously, due to... The, the agent not being able to actually get people to view the property who are the prospective uh, follow-up tenants. Nick? Okay, perfect. So what we don't have here is one critical piece of information, and that is, are we in a fixed-term lease agreement or are we currently running on a month-to-month -month basis? Because that is going to change quite materially what happens in the circumstances, okay? Let's deal with fixed-term lease agreements first. Okay, so the... The uh, question says they've given a month's notice, okay? Um, that That is similar to giving a 20 business days notice in terms of the Consumer Protection Act. Okay, so Section 14 of the Consumer Protection Act allows a tenant to give notice of a fixed term agreement, okay? 20 business days notice of the termination of the agreement, and that will be effective to bring the agreement to an end. And what that particular provision says is that the tenant can still be liable for a reasonable cancellation penalty. But the act itself does not define what a reasonable cancellation penalty is in the circumstances. So the reason that that's done is legislation is quite open because there are a myriad of different agreements. And the section doesn't only apply to leases, it applies to any fixed term agreement. Um, but there are a myriad of different agreements within our law. So it's left purposefully open so that the, there can be some interpretation of what's reasonable in the circumstances. So if this is a case where this is a fixed term agreement, um, I would say absolutely. There, there's a claim to be made there um, to, to say, well, you know, I, the, the landlord may already be entitled to reasonable cancellation penalty, depending on how much time is still uh, due in terms of the lease agreement before the, the natural reflection of the end of the lease. But the fact that the tenant is now preventing them from actually mitigating their damages might be a contributing factor to say that they could actually also be liable for an additional month because we weren't able to get into the premises and let and show it to tenants in the circumstances. So that's the one aspect. The other one, which is slightly more difficult, I think, is the uh, if the lease agreement is running on a month-to-month -month basis. Okay. Um, if, you're, if agreements are running on a month-to-month -month basis, okay, naturally in terms of our law, Agreements that are running on a month-to-month -month basis can be terminated by giving one calendar month's notice to the other party for the termination of the agreement. Okay. And generally what will happen is the contract will come to an end at the end of that month notice period, and they're not going to be liable for anything, anything further. So if a client came to us and said, look, you know, there's a there's a termination, they've given a month's termination, you can't claim damages for the subsequent months. Uh, where you wouldn't have a tenant in occupation of the premises because they've validly terminated the lease agreement. The question then is whether the fact that the tenant is preventing um, you from actually proceeding to mitigate the damages could be uh, could result in you claiming damages against the tenant, and that's quite difficult to answer. Um, you, you would absolutely have to look at the, the lease agreement in place between the parties. Okay, so. Generally, what you're going to have in your lease agreements, if you've got a, a decent written lease agreement, it's going to have a clause that says, well, I'm entitled to show people the premises, uh, you know, at, at whatever stage, you know, during during the lease agreement to try and um, get other tenants to occupy the premises. So if the tenant is preventing that from occurring, it's technically a breach in terms of the, the lease agreement. Okay, and then you might have recourse in terms of your lease agreement for damages. Would that be, uh, you know, a, a month's rental? Quite possibly. Quite possibly. You know, they've given you a month. You're unable to to let someone, uh, you know, view the premises for a month. So it's reasonable that that you would suffer a full month's worth of damages. Um, but it's really going to come into what agreement do you have with that tenant, and do they have an obligation to let you show the premises to other prospective people? If you have a circumstance where, for instance, your contract is running on a month-to-month -month basis and it was a verbal uh, or an, an implied agreement, so there's no written provision that says you have to let me show people this premises, um, 
prior to the, to, to the termination of the agreement, I think it would be very difficult for you to demonstrate to a court um, that you are entitled to claim a month's damages because they didn't let you into premises to let other people view. It's a very specific clause that I would, I would like to see in writing so that you can enforce it. Otherwise, you might fall into a circumstance where the court simply says, no, they are entitled to give you a month's notice. You can't infringe on, on their, um, uh, their occupation of the premises until the end of that period. Uh, and, and there's no damages which can be paid in the circumstances. So that is really a question there of, of what type of lease agreements in place, which would answer the question. Right. Uh, so thank you, very, uh, yeah. thank you very much, Nick. And that does bring us to the end, ladies and gentlemen, of today's uh, two questions and answers. And we'll see everybody again next week. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you guys. Thanks. Cheers.